Hey guys, welcome to the very first Firearms and Fellowship podcast. This is something I've been looking forward to do for quite a while. It's finally here, and I've got two guys that I think you're going to really enjoy listening to. Let me bring them in. They're from Remington Society of America. We have Mike also, the Vice President, and George McAllister, the membership coordinator. Hello, fellas. Good evening. Good evening. Happy to be here. Thank you, Jeremy. I am honored to have Good you guys evening. here this evening. I'm looking forward to the conversation tonight. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how RSA got started, what RSA is, and what the value of being a member of RSA is. So, Mike, why don't you kick us off and tell us a little bit about what Remington Society of America is. All right, Jeremy, uh, thank you for having me here. And then, so I'm Mike Alsop. I'm the current vice president. I'm also the seminar coordinator and I author the column Rim Shots uh, that's in our quarterly journal. Um, our Remington Society is, uh, we started in 1980, 1982. Uh, it's a gathering of collectors uh, of anything Remington and we're in the preservation of anything Remington, preservation of the history. Uh, preservation of the knowledge of Remington. So, it's uh, George. It's, you it's, a, it's a volunteer. It's a volunteer group, and I think that's important to know. And and we're always looking for folks that are interested in in helping us with with directing and running the society. So, any of you that are interested or, or would like to write articles or or anything like that, we're always interested in hearing from you. And if, is there anything we can do to help you with your with your collecting or your interest, we're certainly available to help you do that and happy to do it. Now, one of the things that really interested me about Remington Society of America when I started looking into it is the breadth of knowledge that the board members and members have. We're not talking just about firearms. Uh, Remington made a plethora of items throughout the years, be it typewriters. And you guys can talk a lot more about all the different different things that Remington made, but Remington Society of America offers just a wealth of knowledge. And uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that don't realize um, that you guys are there and available and willing to share that knowledge. Yeah, it's, that's absolutely true. And, and and when I got into the Remington Society, uh, those, those and it was a bunch of older guys in, about like I am now, that, uh, took me under their wing and helped me and, and answered questions and, and openly shared. And, and that's probably what got me to where I am now with my collecting was the, uh, the willingness of those, those older collectors and, and all to help me get where I'm at now. So I'm happy to try to pay that back and help somebody along the line if I can, whatever I can do. Uh, it's, it's a great organization and they, they will talk to you about, Guns, they will talk to you about typewriters, sewing machines, uh, plows, uh, you you name it. They've talked to you about it in, in depth. Nah. And, and, yeah. Well, I want to I want to hear um, how you guys got involved with Remington Society of America. Um, but first, let's just let people know uh, what what they get when they become a member. Um, what is the cost? Um, just some of the basics of of that so a new member uh when you come in for a new member it's fifty dollars for a new member and for uh, in the u.s and it's 45 a year for renewal after that uh the things that you get with uh, uh, uh your membership there is we do a quarterly journal every year which we can talk about that a little later on we have two members meetings um Every year now, we have a members meeting at the Vegas Antique Arms Show in January. We have one in Ohio in July. We can talk about those a little later. And then um, we do a historical seminar every year. Uh, we go try to have one on the East Coast, then West Coast, and then Central, and flip-flop them so everybody can, you know, kind of, uh, you know, see that. We can get into a little bit of detail on those. Uh, but those are some of the good, great benefits Uh but like George said, and let George talk on it, is um, the wealth of knowledge. The the guys that you'll meet, and we have a collector's list that you can be on 
that'll show you uh, who in your area or who in the you know organization collects the same thing. Uh, you can get their contact information if they're willing to share. And they're just a touch away of sharing knowledge with you or comparing notes or anything like that. It, it, it is. And, and, I, and I want I want people to understand, too, that if you're a novice collector or a novice enthusiast, don't think that that anybody thinks any less of you for that. We're, we're there to help you develop and learn and, and know uh, n- nobody's going to intimidate you or anything like that. We welcome you aboard. We want to try to help. We're interested in what you have because we're going to learn from you too. Uh, it's a two-way street. So yes, uh, we're, we're happy to have you. We're happy to have you. Yeah. And, and I, I can speak I from, from experience. Uh, this is how I uh, met you guys. I, I had a, a, a Remington model 34 that had a, a, a stamp on it, a barrel stamp that I wasn't familiar with. And I got online and I couldn't really find an answer. But in some forum, I don't remember which one it was, somebody said, well, why don't you check uh, the guys at Remington Society of America? And so I typed that in, and somehow I got Mike's email address, and I shot him an email. And then, I mean, the next day, he was like, hey, this is what it means. And so, that yeah, it's it's awesome. And, and, and that's it. And, and one I'll, I'll, thing, I'll, one I'll, thing I'd love to do, the one thing I love no, to tell the members is, uh, yeah, when I came in, uh, you know, I was a novice collector, and then you, you look at some of these guys that authored the books. Uh, Charlie Seymour offered the uh, authored the book on the Remington Double Barrel. And that's what I got into collecting a lot. And uh, when I got his contact information, I was a little nervous to call him because I'm like, well, I'm I'm new at this. You know, I only got two double barrels, but I wanted to learn. Jeremy talked to me like we're talking right now. Uh, the guys there, uh, this is how I met George. There's other guys like Rich Shepler, uh, Roy Marco. Uh, you talk to them, and they don't care if you've been a collector for 30 years or you're just into it. They talk to you the exact same way, and they're happy to share the knowledge and you know, uh, are really forthcoming with the knowledge and just want to educate all the way, which is that's the one thing that's blown me away about this organization, and I try to give back as much as I can in that same effort because, trust me, not all the organizations are like that. But uh, that's the one thing I will say about this one. Remington Society guys love to uh, talk, educate, share the knowledge, and are and are willing to help. So that's the biggest thing is if you're a new collector, a novice collector, man, get over there fear talk to them guys trust me they're just as happy to talk to you as if it was talking to somebody who's collected for 30 years so so or probably probably more happy to talk to a younger collector than they are so we are yeah yeah and and i'll I'll speak to uh, a little bit about our seminars and mike is a seminar coordinator we have a, a seminar somewhere every year in in some related field to what we're doing we just we just got back from cody wyoming several days there hosted by the Buffalo Bill Museum with access to everything there. We we're going to Lenoke, Arkansas to the, to the Remington ammunition plant. Uh, we went to Florida to Mr. Not tonight's armament. And it's, it's a family affair. It's not just a bunch of collectors. It's, it's you and your wife or your girlfriend or whatever. And everybody gets to know everybody. It's sort of like a big family gathering. It's uh, it's wonderful. It's, it's an opportunity that you just can't pass up. It's, it's great. Yeah, we for sure. To, on the simple, hey, yeah, uh, oh, Mike, would you would you talk a, a little bit about the uh, the rim shots column that you do? So the rim shots started in the journal, the RSA journal. Uh, and I said uh, it's a column where if you have any Remington questions, you either uh, write an email uh, or, call, or call the rim shots author at the time. Uh, I took it over probably about five years ago from Mike Stryback. And then, um, but it's, uh, we have a, either I try to get the answers for you or, or either I try to answer it or I'll find the experts that can answer it. We have a amazing list of experts that I can go to if it's out of my field or if I can't find anything. Um, and, and that's just what we do. We try to answer these, you know, questions I've started. I, one of the biggest questions I always get is, uh, when was my rifle or shotgun made? And we don't have the production records like 
uh, you know, Colt or Winchester has. So we always go off the barrel date code. Now I do have some really nice documents uh, that show the barrel date code where they're where they're located, how to break them down. And usually when somebody asks me, that, that's I tell them that's what I'm gonna go off of. I need a picture of the barrel date code, and I'll send them those documents so they can find it and it helps them. But um, but that's what we do. We try to find the answers. Uh, a lot of times there, you know, like questions like that. Sometimes there are questions, you know, we just can't answer because we don't know. Um, and then sometimes you get some really, really interesting questions of, uh, you know, you'll find a gun and go, oh, my gosh, wait a minute. Um, not too long ago, and it's going to be coming up in our next uh, quarterly journal, is a um, uh, rolling block Niagara, uh, which is a rolling block that was bought and used on the SS Niagara. Uh, which is or USS Niagara, which was a, a support ship uh, for the U.S. Navy, and those don't come up often. So you find some of these, and you can, you know, uh, trace it back and realize, man, this is a, you know, it's kind of a fun thing. But that's what we do. That's what Rimshots does. Is we try to, uh, we'll answer the questions as best as we possibly can, or get them to the right people to answer. Yeah, I want to emphasize: it's not all about guns. It's it's about most anything Remington ever did. You got a guy like Rich Scheffler back there who was an authority on cutlery and everything Remington ever did that had to do with a knife. And he will he will tell you everything you ever wanted to know about that and is happy to do it. Uh, bullet knives and things of that of that nature. Uh, we we just got we got guys that know a lot about anything. Ammunition, they could talk your ear off about ammunition. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I think it's important for people to realize that Remington's a little bit different from uh, Colt and Winchester in that the records uh, are just not as complete. Um, and I think that's probably a good segue. If you guys can kind of touch on that, the difference and, um, and, and that's a good segue into how RSA kind of came about is, uh, you know, a handful of guys that were really dedicated collectors wanting to get in there and, and get the information. So if one of y'all could jump in on that. Yeah, well, that, that, that's absolutely true. Yeah, so historically, Remington, Remington never, Eli Remington was never Sam Colt. And uh, Colt kept wonderful records. Remington did not keep good records. Or if they had them, they didn't keep them. And Mike can talk a little bit about that, about what happened to the records. But so we, we don't we don't have a yeah, lot so of records. We have some, but we don't have a lot. But we certainly try to share what we have. Yeah. Yeah. And Remington was one of the companies that went through several bankruptcies that, you know, through the years. Uh, it was E. Remington and Sons. Or oh, was E. Remington and McCain, E. Remington and Sons. But it was that up until uh, 1888. Um when they went through the first bankruptcy and then became Remington Arms, which was interesting. It was bought out by a group, which was uh, Marcellus Hartley was one of them in Winchester was actually part of that group. Uh, but in, we found a letter dated 1890 from management that showed uh, they were asking about uh, what do we do about this warehouse that we're paying $95 a year on. And you see a response saying, well, it was, um, What's in there? And then they go, well, it's the records from E. Remington and Sons. You never see a response. You kind of figured they saved $95 a month and got rid of that warehouse. So those records were lost. When you get into the Remington Arms era, uh, 1932, when it became known by DuPont, uh, DuPont had a standing operating procedure of if it was not bringing any money into the company, there was no money to be spent on it. So archives, historical, anything like that was never uh, – you, you would we're supposed to spend any time on it because it wasn't going to bring you any money. Now, yeah, you see, you see a big, guys, you see yeah. a big change in when Dupont took over, as far as uh, the the yeah. philosophy of the company. Well, yeah. they, you can see that, and you can see that in the firearms and the designs. Yeah, yeah, and then um, some creative guys got together, found a room in the back of the plant. Now, you, now you're looking at a plant that covers multiple acres. It's been there from 1816. And there was a room back there. It's like a 20 by 30 room. If you looked at it on the drawings of the plan, it was a 20 by 30 room. Well, they went in there and walled off a little 10 foot section. So if you went by that room, it kind of still looked like a big room, but you didn't notice there was a fake wall back there. And they just started, you know, squirreling away uh, anything. You know, if they thought it was good, they just kind of tossed it back there. Um, 
banners, uh, paperwork, uh, you know, stuff like that. And then this continued on until, uh, like I said, our group started in, our RSA organization started at the Molinar Collection Auction. A couple of the Remington uh, 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 collectors were together and they met in a motel room and decided we should we should do something. We should have a group. And then in 82, they started their they had their very first members meeting. That's when the RSA started. Now in 1991, there was, I believe it was five members, four or five members, but I'm pretty sure it's five. And Roy can verify this. Roy Marco was one of them. They went to Remington. Uh, at the Remington plant, they were researching. Roy was writing a book on the rolling blocks. Uh, a couple of the guys were writing books. That's why they got let in. And they were, they got to look at some of the archives of what Remington called it. And they were, and they were questioning, like, surely there should be more. And at this time, Remington had changed a lot. It was owned by the outdoor group and management was in the preservation of history. They wanted to learn more about the history. And then one of these guys says, oh, hey, we should show them the room. It doesn't exist. And they're like, what? And it's like, there's like five guys knew about this room. They take them up there and they show them. And here is paperwork knee deep, just laying in the floor. And that's when our guys, Roy and them, decided um, they just should, uh, this needed to be preserved. So they talked to management. Management ended up um, building the archives. And from there on, from 1991, the RSA has had managed the archives up until 2018, until the last uh, bankruptcy. So, we had limited stuff. You had to dig through it. You had to find things. Uh, we didn't have it, you know, like production records or anything like that, or the old Parker books where you could look at a, a manufacturing book here and a shipment book, what it shipped out to. Um, so those are the, uh, those are the struggles we have with the Remington. Uh, we helped maintain those archives. We had a research team that would go up there for one week every year, uh, dig through the archives help keep things straight. Sometimes we're allowed to go back up in some of the other rooms and we would find some stuff, bring it back to the archives for preservation. But we were also allowed to make copies of that stuff for ourselves. Uh, so we ended up, the RSA, building a pretty extensive archives on our own. Not as much as what Remington had up there, but it was still a great amount. Um, you know, if there was a guy up there that was interested in double barrels, of course, that's what he's going to look at. You know, he he would get as much as he could. Uh, we have that stuff. Uh, that's one of the nice things about the RSA. That's what we go to to find some of the answers that we try to have, uh, you know, or we try to find. Um, but it's uh, it's just it, it's a it's a tough challenge with Remington. And there's guys that have spent 30, 40 years in going to gun shows and finding brochures or finding this paperwork, buying it. Uh, the research team going up there every year. Uh, digging through, uh, you know, probably since 1991, I guess. And then, uh, but go ahead, George. Yeah. No, I just, I just want to emphasize on, on what you just said. And I want, want folks to understand as a member of the RSA, you have access to those archives. It's not just the board of directors or any, it's, it's anybody that's a member. If they need some information out of those archives, you can get it. Yeah. We, we'll help you or, or Michael help you, Royal help you, any one of the board of directors. But those archives are for the members, not not just us. So you write an article, you need to know something about a rolling block or, a, or an 1100 or something like that. If we have any information in the archives, it's available to you. Yeah. And, and like we were and talking where? about before the show, um, it's increasingly hard to find quality information on the Internet. And having a resource like RSA where you can go get correct information. I mean, guys, for $45 a year, uh, that that pays for itself. I think the journals, just the journals alone, you get four of them a year. These are high quality journals, nice gloss colored pictures. That's worth the membership. Um, and everything else is, is, is just gravy on the toast. I, and I, and I, our I, journal I, is seventy some pages. Yeah, and 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 from a guy uh, that yeah. did this, I can uh, tell, tell you, if you if you have and and we'll take we'll take an article from anybody. You got a, a 
somebody's World War II Remington knife and you want to write an article about it, you can get it published in a journal and you will get a lot of satisfaction out of writing an article and seeing your article in print that you're sharing with other folks. It's, it's, a, it's a great deal. It's fun. Uh, so it's, it's a good and, deal. And in the journal, and, and, and in the journal, it's not just the firearms. Uh, you know, Rich Shepler did a column for years on the Remington Knives. Uh, Mark Eddy did column on Remington History. Gordon Fosberg does column uh, in the journal about the uh, advertisements. Uh, he's one of our big paper collectors. Uh, Tom Quigley does one on Remington reloading tools. So it, it we have articles about guns. We have about uh, Rich, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of his name now, uh, does an article on the 22 uh, ammo, but it's, um, uh, uh, but it's, we have the different bases of the, uh, or different categories, you know, for the articles. I know some guys go, I wish it was all guns. Well, Remington has so much more to offer, you know, that we do have that. Uh, we have the rim shots in there for questions. So if it's a good question, you know, I post it in there, post a response from either myself or from the, uh, uh, expert that I've talked to, you know, back to the gentleman. So everybody yeah. can read and learn about yeah. it. Um, well, I think it's important. Right, it's worth it. these, these, the articles in, in the journal, these aren't, aren't the, uh, recycled articles that you get in some of the, the mail magazines that you get. Um, this is, this is detailed stuff. I mean, you're not going to find this kind of thing in American rifleman or, or whatever, whatever your flavor is. Um, this, this is expert knowledge, detailed, excellent photos. I mean, really the, I was blown away by the journals, but you know, when I got my first one, I was like, I get four of these for 45 bucks a year. I mean, these are, these aren't the kind of thing you just, you throw away when you're done reading it. You put it on the shelf and keep it. Well, let me let me throw a plug in there to Roy Marco and and you you guys somewhere along the line. Uh, hopefully, Jeremy will, will get to interview Roy. Roy's Roy is the editor. He's been putting these journals together for years. Uh, we have a professional photographer and, and all that, that that takes all these pictures and they put it together and they just do a wonderful job. That's an award winning journal. And uh, yeah. these guys dedicate a lot of time and energy to that, and they don't get paid a nickel for doing it. Uh, so well, that's that's that's, a, that's another thing to point out is, uh, you know, guys that are a part of this, it's not for the money. No, it's not. No, it's not. we're all we're all uh, we're all volunteered in this. Uh, uh, me doing rim shots, Roy uh, doing the uh, editing. Everybody, uh, uh, George, membership coordinator, you know, all of us board members are, uh, you know, we don't get paid for it. It's all voluntary position. Uh, we do this because we love it. Uh, we do it because we want to help, you know, pass on, you know, the knowledge and everything. Uh, and it is, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a labor of love is what it is. And Royal spend 40, 50 hours in a journal each quarter. And, you know, just, wrap, you know, he wraps it up, but he's been doing it for, I think the first journal came out maybe in the nineties, I believe. Um, and before that in the, they started doing a paper journal in like 80, 84, 83, 84, something like that. It was just a, you know, couple of uh, sheets of paper, but it's turned into what you see now, 70 some page colored, uh, colored pictures, colored articles, everything. Um, one thing, if you're a member, you get a free advertisement for the uh, one edge section in the back of the journal also. So, yeah. Well, guys, uh, why don't you each talk about um, kind of what you're, what you like to collect, what your interest is, um, and maybe how how you came in contact with RSA and got got involved. Go ahead, Mike. Well, real quick before we start that, I do want I want. Talk one thing about the archives, you know, that we talk about the RSA has. Yeah, sure. Uh, we do yeah. have an extensive archive. Um, we do have an extensive archives, and it is, it's 140 linear feet of paper. And that's not even staying on top of each other. That's how much it is. Now, we're going through a process right now of digitalizing the whole set. 
uh, to preserve it, to make it easy accessible. Now, uh, what we're doing too also is we're going to end up with a archivist position on the board. So anybody looking to write an article, want information, if it's just a quick question, you know, if it's just a single question, you can contact rim shots. If you're writing an article or writing a book, then you would contact the archivist and then the archivist will help you get what you need, you know, out of it. But that is a great benefit of, excuse me, being an RSA member. So that's where I, I, I did want to talk about that. And it's, that's a huge, that's a huge project we have started this year and it's moving great, moving forward. Great. Uh, moving a little faster than I thought it was. And then it's going to, it's just going to preserve everything that we have, especially after the last bankruptcy and not being able to get back into the old Remington and the old Remington plant being closed in Ilium and everything moved down to Georgia. We don't know uh, what the extent of the archives were left up in Ilium. We don't know. Uh, we don't know the status of that right now. So now more than ever, this project we took on was the right time to do it, uh, to get it done and preserve everything we have. Now, we may not have everything, so there may be questions you ask or, you know, need something. We may not have it, but uh, but Lord knows we will try to find it if we can, you know. But that, that was a real quick thing I wanted to talk on the archives. But Yeah, uh, and uh, it, have we mentioned yet that there is a new website coming? No, but there there is. We have an old website, but it's being it's being re refurbished right now. And it it will be up and running shortly. It's 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 going to be user friendly. It's going to be fun to be, and it's, there's going to be pages in there where you can do some of your own research, serial numbers, things of that nature that are that are available. Yes, so there's there is a new website. There's a new website that will be debuting shortly. Uh, we're really. Okay. Members can go to the to the current website. There is a place to to uh, sign up. Yeah, um, right here. So, yeah, you just get on here and uh, yeah. you can get signed up that way. You can do it through the mail, or you can click on a link and it'll take you here, where you can do it online as well. Yeah, yep. and uh, absolutely, and we're absolutely. And, and we're updating, we're updating our, you know, we're revamping the old website, updating it. And like George said, making it a little bit more user friendly, uh, you know, bringing it into the future a little bit more and adding a few other things. So it is, uh, uh, that is, that's another big project that we're doing this year. And these are like the archives project, the website project. These are two, two things that the board members are doing for the members that are kind of behind the scenes that we talk about a little bit, maybe at the members meeting, but maybe not a lot of them know. Uh, but these are things that, you know, uh, hopefully the members know that the board, you know, the board's working for you. We're trying to do everything we can to make the RSA better, uh, move it forward, do what we can for the members. And I know that's one thing that George is uh, adamant on, passionate about, and I'll let him talk about it, but it's just uh, making sure that, all of us guys that are elected guys that volunteer for this, make sure we put the effort in of doing it for the members. So it's always for the members. It's always for the members. Right, let me let me say something too about if let's say you you decide to join the RSA and it's in the fourth quarter of the year and you join up, well, you're going to get that fourth quarter journal. You're also going to get the previous three journals. So mm -hmm. you you join up late, you still get a year's worth of journals. So you're never really behind. Uh, it's it's a pretty. I don't know if all the outfits do that or not, but we do, and uh, it's it's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is, and and that's what happened with me. I I joined up late last year, and sure enough, I got I got all four journals. It, it's it's a good deal. That, uh, that it's it's great. When you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you can't you just can't overstate the value that you get from the membership. Um, it, with, especially with with the Ar archives project coming up and and just being able to have the resource of of all that knowledge that that the members have and the board members have and and their willingness to share it it's it's a real thing it, it is a real thing uh, when i got started the, I, I, the, uh, oh go, go ahead, ahead I, I, with the, the, the get-togethers 
uh, the, the the get togethers we do, you know, it's always uh, when it first started, they always had a members meeting in Vegas. That's because the original charter members, a lot of them were down that way. And the Vegas antique arms show was the best thing, the you know, best place for it. Well, now we have a um, members meeting in Vegas in January and also one in July at the Ohio Gun Collector Show. Uh, best part about the one in July. So the Ohio Gun Collectors is a members only show but they open it up to the RSA members. So if you're RSA member and want to come, you have an opportunity to buy a guest pass to come to the show. But if you just want to come to the members meeting, which is after the show on Saturday night, and that show is coming up July, or July 12th and 13th. And uh, Saturday night at 530 is our you know show going to open, our, our members meeting is going to open up. It's outside the show. So you don't even have to come into the show. You can just come to the meeting. But we we interact with the, you know, with the members, we, uh, us board members that are there, we'll get up, we'll talk about each of the things that are going on, educate, you know, just let them know what, what we're doing. Uh, we have raffles. Uh, sometimes we'll have special guests like, uh, uh, David Wheeler from Anderson manufacturing, uh, was at last year's July show and talked about how Anderson manufacturing, one of the largest AR manufacturers bought all of the leftover Remington 700s from Rem Arms. Uh, and it, and are putting them together and selling them as custom rifles. So David came up, you know, we invited him there. He came to the uh, meeting, stood up, talked about that. So we always have, you know, try to have new uh, new news, anything like that. But we, we always try to invite the members and tell them, like, you know, hey, or if we're going to be at a show and no three or four of us are going to be there, like Oklahoma, or, you know, Tulsa show or something like that, you know, just let the members know, hey, here's where the guys are going to be. Uh, and, you know, so yeah, come visit. Sure. Trust me. You know, it's, yeah. yeah. George, George and I got the opportunity to to meet up in, in Tulsa this year at Watermockers, and that was great. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, well, uh, yeah we we do a lot of shows. Uh, there's, there's generally an RSA presence at, at most any big show, Baltimore, uh, Tulsa, uh, Vegas, uh, most any of oh, them, Ohio. Yeah, uh, yeah, guys, uh, guys, collectors are there, and, and we're always we always want to meet you. The show, please come find us. Uh, yeah, Arthur, now, let's, one thing, one thing, one thing, find you. let's let's jump yeah, back in. Uh, we're gonna circle back around. Um, what what are you? What's your what are your interests in in Remington? Um, Mike, you want to start off and kind of talk about what what tickles your fancy? Yeah, so I uh, right now my my main interest in is the Remington double barrels and of course the early Remington single barrels. Um, I've actually written six articles on or five articles on the Remington single barrels, uh, starting from the muzzle loading, the first one they ever made is around 1860 up until the uh, Model Three or the uh, Number Nine, which they ended in uh, 1910. But the Remington double barrels is my main collecting interest but i love the shotgun reloading tools that remington has uh you know i'm a 22 collector too with the remingtons you know also and it's um it kind of snowballs a little bit uh you know and then and then you get them things that you just gotta have i you know i got remington skeet throwers all around here and always looking for you know a new one a different one uh the, the little stuff i love too the oil bottles and everything but uh, you know, the, the main main collecting interest, what I would say is uh, is the the early shotguns, the single barrels and double barrels, is my main um, you know main collecting. But like I said, I always look for those you know nice things uh, or those odd, so to speak, things. Uh, you know, I, everything works right. At the end of this year, I'm going to end up with a sewing machine, a Remington sewing machine, a Remington cash register, and a Remington bicycle. So just the different things that you know if it's uh the, i know some guys stick strictly in a thing and i try to but eh, my, my eyes get a little too big <laughs> so but george i i i guess as far back as i can remember i wanted to be a cowboy and uh that's from that's from cap guns on up when we were kids and uh so i always had an interest in antique arms and the, and the civil war too so but but working and and building houses and putting kids through school and things of that nature that was pretty much prohibitive i just didn't have the 
the funds to do that. But uh, once I retired, I, I had a buddy who was a Civil War guy, and he asked me if I wanted to go to a show with him. And I said, yeah. So I, I think we went to Baltimore the first time, and I was just amazed. Here's all these wonderful, beautiful old guns all over the place. I couldn't believe they existed I, or that they were available. I was just just blown away. So I thought, well, I want to collect Colts. Well, you will find out real quick. If your pockets aren't pretty deep, you can't collect Colts, not single actions anyhow, or I couldn't. And uh, Winchester's kind of the same way. But in, in casting around, I got to notice in these Remingtons, these Civil War Remington pistols, beautiful guns uh, and affordable compared to Colts and Winchesters. So I, I got to reading and studying a little bit about them and uh, finally finally bought one. Uh, and that's, that's what sets you off. Uh, I don't think any of us ever set out to be a collector. I think you evolve into being a collector. Uh, mm. So, but in, in doing that, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Mr. Fritz Bear and Don Ware, who were old time Remington collectors. And I expressed a little interest. I saw them in a show and introduced myself. And they, they just took me under their wings. And it's just, it's just grown from there. These guys have taught me and, and it's just evolved, and I've, I've never stopped. So uh, Civil, Civil War, martially marked, Civil War used Remington revolvers, and Indian Wars, Remington single actions, 1875s, 1888s, and, and 1890s is my main focus. Uh, with, a, with a sprinkling of, of other things in there, you see that, that rolling block on the wall behind me up there, that's a, that's a Mexican rolling block with a was saber bayonet for it back then it, I picked up I couldn't pass that up but yeah. uh so th so that's kind of how it went with me and it's uh, and that's, that's that's still what I'm chasing uh but the the collection has has, has grown nicely and uh I, I feel very blessed to have what I have and uh couldn't have done it without the help of with guys at the RSA it's that's it that's, that's strictly yeah. what got me where I am Guys, I, I appreciate you coming on tonight and, and talking about RSA. Um, I hope that uh, our viewers learn well, something, and I hope they're they're interested. They'll go check it out, uh, RemingtonSociety.org. Uh, it's a great organization. Uh, we're going to do some more podcasts together. Uh, like we do, you were just talking about, uh, you kind of see a couple different philosophies as far as it comes to collecting. And so we're going to have some conversations about that. But I also want the viewers to know that RSA is not just for collectors. It, it can be, if you can have one firearm and you want to learn more about it, you're, you're as welcome as the next guy that has <laughs> a thousand firearms. Um, so it's not just collectors. Um, I, I own all different kinds of firearms. My very first one was, was Remington. And so I, I kind of have a little bit of a passion for those, but I collect all different kinds of firearms, but I find RSA to be a, just a wonderful resource. You guys, uh, if you have anything else you want to talk about before we, before we kick off, jump in. You know, I, I, I want to, I want to thank you for the opportunity of being here and, and helping us promote the RSA. Uh, everyone's welcome. We'd love to see yes. if there's anything we can do, any questions we can answer for you. Don't, don't hesitate. To, uh, to get in touch with us, go to the website. You can find our contact information. And, uh, and we're always available to you. So, uh, and, and if you're interested in joining, please do. Please, please come see us. Come be a part of us. We'd love to have you. Mike? Yeah, exactly. I appreciate you. Uh, uh, I appreciate you offering this for us and inviting us on here. You know, it's great. And, you know, the one that, been, uh, you know, George said it all right there. The only thing I could add to it would be, um, you know, tell these guys that if you're doesn't matter if you're a collector, accumulator, or if you're just interested in it, or you know want some information, feel free. Don't don't hesitate and don't be scared to reach out to some of these guys and talk to them because they are um, you know they're happy to share the knowledge. They're uh, you know don't let that set you back. You know uh, that's what we're here for. That's what our so I feel like my job is for you know to help share what we have and preserve the history. So that's what um you know. It, definitely contact us fantastic guys thank you so much we're gonna thanks folks appreciate it enjoy it <laughs> yeah thank you yeah. uh look forward to seeing uh the comments on on youtube uh please like share and subscribe uh 
hit the notification bell because we're going to have more of these podcasts. Uh, we're going to do it with a whole, a whole group of people. Um, so I think it's going to be a great value to you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please go check out Firearms and Fellowship on YouTube. Uh, RSA is, also has a presence on Facebook. So come over there. We've got a public group where you can come in and you can post, you can ask questions. Um, so that's, that's a great resource as well. Guys, thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Jeremy.